Welcome back to another Power Query tutorial. All right, so this is actually kind of just one of those random videos that I decided to do. I am actually in the process of working on a project for somebody, and there was a very unique requirement where there was some information that we wanted to send from Excel to a URL using a post request. And we weren't really comfortable using the VBA side of things. And so naturally I kind of said, well, I think in this situation, because we are customizing so much of the process from start to finish, and in our particular situation, we're gonna be using Azure functions. I said, what if we could make this post request using a built-in application like Power Query? And so I did a little bit of research and I came up with the conclusion it's very much possible. In fact, there are examples out there of people making a post request using Power Query. So in this video, we are going to see how to take information from Excel and submit it to a post request that is on some type of server or whatever. Now, in our situation, I am using Azure Functions, so I have a lot more control over the process. And at some point, we will have a series on Azure Functions. But the idea or the structure is the same, which is we have some content. We're going to be posting that content to the function. And then that function is going to send us JSON data back to let us know that the information was uh, received correctly. And so that's basically what our plan is for today. So as you can tell right now in my Excel workbook, I have a couple different tables set up for us. The first table is containing a value for a URL. Now, the nice thing about an Azure function is I can run these locally, so I can mimic what it would be like to send this request. And so what we're gonna be doing is we are gonna be uh, storing, or we're gonna basically be running this Azure function on a local host port. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the information in this table and we're gonna post it to that function. So we're gonna send it in the form of a web request, but more specifically a post web request. And we're gonna take this information and we are going to post it to it. And then that function is going to save that information to a file. Now I'm not gonna write the code for the function, but I will show you what that code looks like and what it's intended to do. Now, after it saves that information to a file, it's then going to send us back information in the form of a JSON string, at which point we will parse it and load it directly into Excel. That's the result of this table. This table will take that information and it will put it here and it will be its own separate Power Query query. So with that being said, let's jump over to Visual Studio Code so you can see the function and then more specifically so we can start it up. Now, for Microsoft Azure, these are the Azure functions, but uh, they're really simple and I actually love them a lot. It's super, super easy to use these, which I was quite surprised. But basically all it's going to be doing is uh, grabbing some JSON data from the body. Um, if there is no JSON data, then what happens is it sends a, a dictionary back, a Python dictionary, and it basically says, hey, there was something wrong with it. Here is the status code, and here's the category of that status code. If, it, if there is information in our request body, then what we're going to be doing is taking this information, and we are going to save it to a file, a TD state file, and that's actually right here, if I go into my config folder, I can see that I've already tested it, so I know it works, which is beautiful, but it's gonna be taking that, saving it to that file, and then what we're gonna be doing from there is building a new message that in this situation specifies it was successful, and then sending it back to the user. So this would be the response to the user. So this portion right here, and then this portion right here is what is sent back to the user. Notice that I make a JSON string in each situation. It's important that it's a JSON string. So with that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna create a uh, new table or new sheet to be more specific. And we're gonna basically recreate what we see here. And then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up my Azure function. So I'm gonna start my little debug thing. Oh geez, no, I want it to be up here. There we go, and I'm gonna put this.
and then it does its whole little fun thing. And just to give you an idea of uh, what it would look like, you can see that it, because I sent nothing along with it, it said, hey, you sent me something that had no data, so nothing could be saved. So this was uh, just letting me know that it ran correctly. It, it worked as expected. It's just we didn't send anything along with it. So it's kind of saying, well, what do you want me to save? You didn't send me anything. So that validates to me that it's working. So I'm going to jump back into Excel and start recreating the information we need. Now, in this situation, I'm going to have a field and then a value. The first one will be the URL. And then what I'm going to be doing is copying the URL that we are going to. I want it to have the HTTPS or HTTP to be more specific. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to put that in the field just like that. And I'm going to create a table out of this. It does have headers in it. I like to change it a little bit. I'm going to call this load credentials URL. So that's going to be the name of our table. I'm going to change my row height a little bit because I'm very particular and clean it up, clean it up. There we go. And I'm going to make this so you can very clearly tell what it is. All right, WVG, and then we will go from here. OK, so that's our first table and I'll make our little URL blue so we can easily tell what it is. I'm then going to copy uh, some of this information here and we will make it where it's a little bit different. And then we will change this to, oh God, what we'll do, do 25, make this one. And then from here, I wanna give it a different name. I'm gonna call this uh, credentials value. So that's the name of the table. I want to make this a little bit different so I can make sure I can clearly tell that what I sent was different this time. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, there we go. And I'm going to make sure they're all aligned. So that looks good. So what we can do from here now is we can go into Power Query and we can start writing the queries to load this information. Now, some of this is pretty simple. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be loading this URL. So if I right click in my table, I will notice that I have my little get data from table or range. So I'm going to use that. Okay, so that looks great. And then what I want is I want this specific URL. So I'm going to select it, right click, drill down. Okay. So this is my URL, so that looks good. I'm then going to close and load to, and then only create a connection. I'm gonna expand this out so you can easily see everything. The next one is our field and value table. So I'm gonna again right click, go down to get data from table or range. And we got our credentials value. This one's a little bit more complicated because we have to make sure we set up the information correctly. So we make sure it's the correct JSON data. So what we are first going to do is I want these, these rows right here, this, this column to be my column header. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my transform tab and I'm gonna do transpose. And then I'm gonna make sure that my first row is now my header. So I'm gonna to go to home, use first row as headers. And then you can see here, this all looks good. The only reason I am doing this is because I will show you inside of my TD state, I want it to not be a list, I want it to be a record. And so that's very specific because keep in mind, when we're jumping from Power Query to Python or whatever, we have to make sure that we're converting it to the right data type or we're structuring it in the right way. So I wanna make sure that I'm not getting a list of records, I want to make sure I have a record because a record is basically like a dictionary in Python. So I want it to be a dictionary in Python. 
That's why this is very important because now what I can do is I can take this table and I can convert it to a record a source, a source of records. However, to do this, I need to jump into my advanced editor. So I'm gonna to go to view, then into advanced editor. You'll see all the code that we have basically created so far. I'm gonna now create the next line, which is table records equals table to records. And then I'm going to take this step here and then put it in to this step. And then just so you can see what is the result of this operation, let's see what we get. So now we have a list of records. However, I don't need a list, I just need a record. So I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna index that list to return the first and only record. And so now I have a record and you can see that because now we're on the record tools. From here, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to take this record and convert it to a JSON content. So we're gonna create it to basically a binary content, but it's gonna be uh, formatted in the form of JSON. So uh, I will let you know that because we are not doing a string, we are doing raw JSON, it's technically all binary. So we're not gonna see anything at this point, but it's important we do this step because in our post request, we are sending JSON content. So we're saying JSON from value, and then we're gonna do table records. This will create our JSON records. We'll put this here, and then we'll see what the result of that is. So you can see now that we have some binary content. And then if we were to go here, we could open this binary content as different objects. So there's HTML, XML tables, PDF, JSON, and so on and so on. So we now have our URL, and we now have our JSON content that we want to send along in our post request. What's next? Well, next we are gonna build the actual post request. We're gonna actually do the post request. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click in my queries pane, I'm gonna do new query, and then I'm gonna do other source, and then I'm gonna do blank query. And then we'll say, and rename this to make post request. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to view, advanced editor, and I'm gonna start building this content. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do web contents. Then from here, I'm gonna do the URL, and then we can see, we now see our different URLs. I want the load credentials URL, so that's the URL I'm gonna be requesting. And then I need to send my options. The options are specified as a, a record, and then the first one is gonna be the headers that we want in our request. In this case, I'm gonna be doing uh, a dollar sign content type equals application forward slash JSON. This is saying that the content we are sending in our request is of the format JSON or it's of the, the data type JSON or the content type JSON. That's important because obviously what we're sending is our credentials. Okay. Then the next one is the actual content that we want to, to send. Now, if you ever forget, you can just look right here. I want it to be my credentials value. That's the raw binary content that is structured as JSON. And this is technically our web content. So this is our request. However, we need to take it one step further because this is going to return more binary content. That's not really helpful because we can't work with just raw binary content. We need to convert it into some type of uh, data type we can work with. So I'm gonna take the JSON document and then I'm going to wrap that around my web request. And from here, what I want is I'm gonna indent it so it's a little bit easier to read, just like that. And let's see what this gives us. Ah, okay. So it looks like it was successfully loaded, but I wanna validate that by actually looking at that file. So if I go in here 
I notice that my content has changed. That is a good sign. It means it worked successfully. So what we could do from here is if you wanted, you could convert it to a table and maybe I want to change this all to, let's say, uh, text. Let's say change type to text. And then I could load to a connection. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, right click, load to this one. I'm going to put it in a table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to my little green. And then I'll change this to my little row height of 25. I'll do my Arial Nova. There we go. And then from here, let's see if we can uh, turn off some of this. So <clears throat> at this point, what can we start doing with it? Well, there's a lot of different things. No one says that it has to be just this. So maybe I could say uh, new token and then that equals Alex, right? So I would um, right click this and then I would refresh it. And then I would go here and I can see everything is starting to work super nice. So at this point, we have now seen how to make a post request using Power Query. Very useful. Um, like I said, this was actually just inspired by a project I was doing for somebody and I never had done anything like this. So I said, this seems like a perfect opportunity to make a video. So I thought, hey, I thought this was interesting. I thought other people might find this interesting as well. So if you have any questions regarding making a post request using Power Query, feel free to put those questions down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in our next video.